Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Bend tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend Tutoring. And today's tutorial is going to be about dividing polynomials using synthetic division. All right, so let's take a look at it. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, synthetic division is best used when you're dividing by the form of x plus c or if it's written as x equals to c. What do I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen? I mean that if you are dividing by, let's say, the quantity of x minus 2, then yeah go ahead and use synthetic division. However, if you have a coefficient in front of that value of x that's not 1, for instance, here we have 3 in front of the variable x, then this is not ideal to use synthetic division. In fact, you may want to go ahead and try using the long division process that we have shown you in our other video. So, I'll put a link right down here. Okay? There it is. So continuing on, if I'm dividing by x plus 5, then that is in the format of x plus c. So therefore, I would use synthetic division in this case. Checking this out further, x plus 1, yep, that's perfect for synthetic division. However, 2x minus 17, nah, you got a 2 in front of the variable x. So yeah, don't use synthetic division. And then we have dividing by x minus 10. So yes, that's great for synthetic division. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are ways to use synthetic division in this form. However, I just don't think it's that efficient. So since I'm always pushing for accuracy and also consistency in a process, I'm going to ask you guys to only use synthetic division when it's in that form of x plus c. All right, but you have free will still. So let's check out some problems. Problems. If I have the following problem, number one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm dividing 3x squared minus x minus 24 by the divisor of x minus 3. Now, it could be written this way, already set up in long division, or you can find this problem written in this format, where it has the quantity of 3x squared minus x minus 24 divided by x minus 3. Or they can just simply say divide 3x squared minus x minus 24 when x equals to 3. So if that's the case, ladies and gentlemen, these all mean the same thing. And we're going to set up our synthetic division like so. So since in this last scenario here, they told us that the value of x would equal to 3, we'll have 3 on the outside of an upside down division symbol. Mm -hmm, just like that. Within this division symbol, you'll be placing all of the coefficients from your dividend, aka this 3x squared minus x minus 24. So my first coefficient is 3, the second coefficient is negative 1, and the last coefficient is negative 24. Okay, from there, the process is as follows. You're going to bring down that first value. So my first value here is 3. Then you'll multiply. So 3 times 3 gives me 9. And then from there, I combine the negative 1 and the positive 9 to give me a positive 8. Multiplying, I have 3 times 8. That gives me 24. And then, ladies and gentlemen, the negative 24 and the positive 24 gives me a value of 0. In this situation, ladies and gentlemen, anytime this last value equals a 0, that means that the divisor went into the original dividend evenly. Okay? And this is the next step. Remember that our highest exponent in the original expression was 2, right? You're going to always take 1 away from that, and you'll write your result as follows. It will be 3x plus 8 and that's it. That's the answer. 3x plus 8. That's synthetic division, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's try some more, shall we? Okay, let's look at problem number two next. In problem number two, we have 5x to the fifth power minus 10x to the fourth power minus 4x squared plus 15x minus 14, all divided by x minus 2. So the first thing you want to do when you have it set up like this, ladies and gentlemen, is set this divisor, x minus 2, equal to 0. So my first step is to have x minus 2 equal to 0 and then solve for that. All right, so you'll end up with x equals to 2. Once you find out this value, this is going to be the actual value that you use in your synthetic division. So I'll be setting it up like so. I'll have 2, and then my upside down division symbol. And within it, I'll have all of my coefficients in descending order of the variable. So I'll have first 5, then negative 10, 
Then, since I didn't have an x cubed term, I'll have 0, then negative 4, then 15, then finally negative 14. All right, so this is my initial setup for this problem using synthetic division. Remember, we're going to bring down our first value, so 5 comes straight down. Then multiplying 2 times 5 gives me 10. I know combining negative 10 plus 10 gives me 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. And then I have 2 times 0, which gives me 0. I'll bring down a negative 4. Multiplying 2 times negative 4, you'll end up with negative 8. Combining 15 and negative 8, you'll end up with positive 7, and 2 times 7 is 14, which gives you a result of 0. So our divisor, x minus 2, went into the original expression evenly. For our result, remember that our original highest exponent was 5. So in order to write our answer, we'll always subtract 1 from the highest exponents. So that means that my first term's variable and exponent will be x to the fourth power. So this is going to be 5x to the fourth power. Then I don't have an x cubed term. I wouldn't have an x squared term, but I do have negative 4x plus 7 as my final result, and this is the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's problem number two. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep going here. Next problem. So here I have in problem number three, 7x to the fourth power minus 19x cubed minus 9x squared plus 14x minus 13, all being divided by x minus 3. So the first step I'll need to do is to find out what x equals to. So set the divisor equal to 0. We'll have x minus 3 equal to 0. Then I'll add 3 to both sides of my equal sign. This gives me x equals to 3. So this is the value that I'll be using in my synthetic division process. From there, I'll have 3 on the outside of my upside down division symbol here. And within it, I'll be placing all the coefficients that I see here in descending order of x. So that means I'll have my first coefficient, 7, then negative 19, then negative 9, then 14, and then negative 13. So this is the setup here for problem number 3. The first thing I do, bring down that positive 7. From there, we'll be multiplying 3 times 7 to give me 21. Combining negative 19 and 21 gives me 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 9 plus 6 gives me negative 3. Then, multiplying 3 times negative 3, I end up with negative 9. 14 minus 9 is 5. And then, multiplying 3 times 5, I end up with 15. Notice that my last value here is not 0 this time, it's 2. That means that I'll have a remainder, and I'm going to show you exactly what to do with that. Remember that our highest exponent was originally 4. So my answer's first term will be 1 less than that. So it's going to be x to the third power. So my solution will be 7x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 then with your remainder, which is that value of 2, I'll have plus 2 over the original divisor, which is x minus 3. So it'll look just like that, ladies and gentlemen. 7x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 plus 2 over my divisor, which is x minus 3. And this is the answer to problem number 3, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's keep it moving here. Problem number four is next. Now check out problem number four. I'll have x to the fourth power minus five divided by x minus one. So the first step that I'll need to do is to find out what the value of x is from the divisor. I'll have x minus one equal to zero, and I'll add one to both sides of the equal sign to find that I need to use one for x. This is the value that I'll use in my setup. All right, from here, I have one on the outside of my upside down division symbol here that I obviously can't draw straight. And I'll have my coefficients. So I'll end up with one because that's one x to the fourth power. I don't have an x cubed term. I don't have an x squared term. I don't have an x to the first power term. But I do have an x to the zero power term, aka that constant of negative five. All right, then the process remains the same. I'll be bringing down that first value of 1. Then multiplying, 1 times 1 gives me 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is still 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. 
lot of ones here. And then 1 times 1 gives me 1 for a result of negative 5 plus 1. That gives me negative 4. So this would be my remainder here in the problem. All right, there's something called the remainder value theorem, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're ever doing that, all you have to do is use your synthetic division. That last value is going to be the result that you would have gotten if you were to plug in that value, in this case, 1, into the original expression, a.k.a. function. All right, so let's get back to dividing polynomials. In order to write our answer, remember the highest exponent here was 4. So that means that the highest exponent in my answer will be 3. So we'll write our result as x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 minus 4 over the divisor of x minus 1. All right. Notice that since my remainder was negative, I went ahead and wrote my negative as a minus sign and then wrote 4 over the divisor of x minus 1. Okay. So that's the answer to problem number 4, ladies and gentlemen. Just like so. Done and done. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is dividing polynomials using synthetic division. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, ladies and gentlemen, please donate to help us bring you more free math videos. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? You could do all that on tutorme.math.net.